not sure how this is going to work out. Just, just try here on my grill. This video is going to be mainly about breaking down where we're at in the season right now. Now, we're about a quarter away through the season, roughly around 15 games, give or take a few here or there for some teams. But one of the things we've been talking about is if you're five to seven games out right now, it's going to be very tough for you to catch your teams. Remember the philosophy I gave in my prior uh, videos? Right now, if you're a team that's five to seven games out, you know, it's a good time for management to have meetings because this is a 60 game schedule. We're a quarter way through the season. You're five games out. Not good. If you're five to seven games out, you're in trouble. Like if you're Pittsburgh, eight or nine out, you're, I hate to say, you're pretty much done. Now, the way it works is if, remember, if you're at the 30 game mark and 30 games to go and you're five games out, that means you got to go 25 and five and you hope the team in front of you goes 20 and 10 and you have some first, uh, some matchups in the schedule down the way. That's how it's going to work. Everything's coming down to a very microscopic level. If we're, again, if you're five to seven games out now after 15 games, that's not good. 30 games, five to seven out, you're probably done. It's 60 game schedule is going to eliminate a lot of teams very quickly. I've been telling you guys that all year long, and there's already teams that are put themselves behind, behind the ball. They already put themselves in trouble. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and same with goes goes with players. The same philosophy. There's some players struggling. Yelich, uh, Bellinger. There's a lot of players struggling out there. Even some pitchers like Charlie Morton. But it's not stopping Tampa from being a good pitching team. We're just saying, if you're struggling now, you're going to have to really blaze a trail in the next 45 games just to be you know be able to help your team or whatnot. So it's going to be interesting. So what we also want to do is look at the MVPs from last year and the Cy Young Award winners and compare them what they're kind of doing this year. And then we're going to talk about the divisions. So let's get started. Now, first MVP we're going to break down from 2019 is Mike Trout. His team's in fifth place, but he's putting up Mike Trout numbers like always. But with 60 game schedule, I'm not sure he's going to fit into the MVP candidacy. Then Alex Bregman, not having a good year. Obviously, Houston is struggling and will continue to struggle, but he's not going to be in the top five or ten. DJ is just clobbering the ball for a first place team. So I think his stock for being an MVP is up there. And look at this, DJ can hit the ball everywhere. Then moving on over to Oakland, even though they're in first place, Marcus is not having a good season at all. Uh, he was in the top five MVP voting 19, but not this year. And then Xander having a pretty decent season, not MVP caliber, but it's still early and he can still bolster up those numbers, but his team is not doing well. So that might hurt his chances in a 60 game schedule. And then in the National League, Cody Bellinger, last year's MVP, is just struggling mightily, 167 average. He toyed around with his stance during the offseason, so I'm not sure if that's really impacting him. He's definitely not hitting the ball well. Then same thing with Christian Yelich, who's a prior MVP, betting 164. His team's in third place. Both players struggling. They're really going to have to light it up, but I think the Dodgers still have a chance to make the playoffs. Milwaukee's, I'm not sure. And then uh, with Marte, he's hitting good. His power numbers aren't there, but his team's in last place. So in a 60-game schedule, I'm not sure he's going to be able to be ranked high in MVP voting this year. And then for possible MVPs, just throwing these names in the hat, Nelson Cruz. His team's in first place. He's putting up RBIs. He's hitting the ball everywhere without big power numbers. And then, of course, Aaron Judge. Why not? I mean, he's been powering the Yankees all season long. And then Fernando Tatis, possibly MVP for National League, helping the Padres power into a competitive position. And Charlie Blackmon. Dude's hitting 500 as of today. That's ridiculous. And then pitchers that were Cy Young candidates last year. Justin's injured. Garrett Cole's not really dominating, but he's helping the Yankees win. Charlie Morton's just getting clubbed around. And uh, Shane Bieber back to the form he was in 19. 1.63 ERA. Lance Lenz back to where he was last year with three quality starts. Uh, Jacob DeGrom, of course. He's always going to be in the mix. Solid all year long. And then look at Jin Ryu. 4.05 ERA for the Blue Jays, not doing it. Max Scherzer, back to where he was, always going to be putting up those numbers. Uh, Jack Flaherty, he's doing pretty good this year also for possible Cy Young. And then uh, Randy over in Minnesota, he's on a first-place team. He's putting up just sick numbers. Same thing with Shane Bieber, putting up sick numbers for Cleveland. And then nationally, uh, Trevor Bauer, 0.93 ERA. you got to be kidding me. Sonny Gray having a solid season, three quality starts. So we'll see how it pans out at the end of the 60-game schedule for Cy Young Awards. Okay, let's start off with the American League East. When you look at the division with the Yankees, um, you have the Yankees, Tampa Bay, 
uh, doing it. But what's interesting about this division is the pitching. Uh, Toronto's doing really well at the pitching. Yankees are ranked right now with their ERA 19th. Baltimore's 21st. Toronto's 11th. That's with their ERA. That's not good. Uh, the next 45 games, we'll have to see how that pans out. Uh, Tampa Bay's ranked 8th. And that's with Charlie Morton and Schneel not having good seasons. So it's pretty incredible. But uh, Yankees are doing it uh, with offense. Same with Tampa Bay. Uh, Boston is struggling with pitching. And, uh, you know, Boston's five games out. And this is what I'm saying. You know, we're coming up on a 30-game mark uh, in two weeks. You're five games out. You need to start closing that gap. Boston's going to be in a lot of trouble. So right now the Yankees are on top of the East, and they're looking good in Tampa Bay. I think this is going to be New York and Tampa Bay's division. Um, Baltimore's is the surprise team. They're putting up offense, and they're decent with pitching. Their pitching is pretty similar to the Yankees. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see how it pounds out. Now we move over to the American League Central Division, and when you look at the Minnesota Twins, they're doing fantastic. But what's interesting about Minnesota, compared to last year, they've got the fifth best ranked ERA. That's crazy. That's going to keep them in the mix. Um, they're hitting, they're pitching. Uh, the Tigers are, are hitting, and they're pitching poor. But I'm just surprised the Tigers at nine and seven. I really am. I didn't think the Tigers would be in it at all this year. Their pitching ERA is ranked 26th. Uh, not good at all. Um, Kansas City struggling. They've got hitting, not pitching, and the Indians, the number one pitching ERA in Major League Baseball, only 44 runs given up. Cleveland looks great, man. Uh, the only problem with Cleveland is they got to put up points. They got to start putting up runs in this division with uh, Minnesota and Chicago and Detroit. These are hitting teams, so they've got to put up uh, some more runs to stay competitive in this division. But so far, it's Minnesota, Detroit, and Cleveland. In Chicago, I still think all those teams are in it. And Kansas City is only four games out. So, again, you know, as I – so, again, with four games out with Kansas City, as I talk about it, is that's still okay. Um, four games out, it's okay. Even at the 30-game mark, four games out's pretty good. All right, finally, let's move on over to the American League West, uh, where you have the Oakland Athletics just blazing a trail. And they're doing it with pitching. They're doing it with hitting. Uh, they're doing it with – you know, some coaches doing some pretty shady stuff on the sidelines. But anyhow, um, when you look at them, uh, let's see, Oakland Oakland is ranked third for ERA. Uh, Texas 17th, so not good. 16th is Houston. Houston's pitching struggling. Uh, they don't have Verlander. They don't have Cole, and they've got a bunch of youthful arms. They're just – they're not doing good, and I don't think Houston's going to make the playoffs. Uh, but, yeah, so far – you know, when you look at Seattle, they just have no pitching. Angels have no pitching, but they have the offense. Houston has offense, but not the pitching. The Rangers don't have offense, but the, and their pitching is kind of here and there. Uh, so it's an interesting division, but definitely Oakland has taken this division. And interesting is uh, Seattle's five and a half games out. I mean, you're five and a half games out and you're only 15 games in. Not going to be good. I mean, once you hit the 30-game mark, if you're eight games out, you're done. You're done. I'm telling you, the season's going to go by quick. This is a sprint. It's not going to be what you guys think it is. It's going to happen quickly, and it's going to be over quickly. Okay, we're going to move on over to the National League East and the standings. Uh, you know, I'm not going to count Miami Marlins with 11 games played, so I'm not even going to talk about them because it makes no sense that they're even in first place right now. It's just I would rather go by wins in the 60-game schedule at this point. Um, Atlanta Braves doing it. Uh, Washington Nationals are in the mix, Philadelphia, and the Mets. I actually think with this division, this is a very competitive division. I think uh, with the exception of uh, Miami making up those games, I think all these teams are in it. Uh, Braves have the best offense in Major League Baseball, but their pitching's not that good. Nationals have phenomenal pitching, but they're not putting up offense. Um, when you look at the Phillies, Phillies are here and there. You know, they... Sometimes I think the Phillies are ready just to bust out, but they're only played 12 games. So, you know, you got to give them another five or six to really measure where they're at. And then um, when you look at the Mets, you know, they if it wasn't for Jacob DeGrom, this team would just be horrible. They, they've they already given up 94 runs. Their pitching staff is not doing well at all. And if anything, I think their pitching staff is ranked 25th. Philadelphia is ranked 29th. Washington is ranked 4th in ERA. Uh, Atlanta is ranked 18th. So, We'll have to wait and see how it pans out. As we move over to the National League Central Division, the Cubbies just blazing the trail. Uh, they've got hitting, they've got pitching, and I'm not going to count the St. Louis Cardinals because they've only played five games. Um, but when you look at Cincinnati starting rotation, the thing that's interesting about Cincinnati is you got to look at that team with Bauer and 
and Gray, you got to look at those guys in a seven-game series. When you have that type of starting pitching in a seven-game series, I'm telling you, man, since Santa could be a surprise team. They could be in there in Milwaukee. Uh, you know, they're here and there, and that's without Yelich even hitting some uh, other areas they're struggling in. But uh, 63 runs given up. I think ranked for Milwaukee, they're ranked ninth in pitching. Reds are 14th, and, and Cubs are 15th with ERA. So there's still a lot of uh, baseball to be played. But what's interesting is the Pirates are nine games out. You've only played 15 games. How are you nine games out? Uh, I hate to say it, but Pittsburgh, you're, you're ready to pack it in. You're pretty much done for the season. Fun division is the National League West. Uh, you have some interesting teams out there. Colorado's pitching is fantastic. They're ranked seventh in ERA. Uh, they're currently ranked first place. Then you got the Padres and the Dodgers, and then Giants and the Diamondbacks picking up the low end. Listen, the Giant and Arizona fans, I'm sorry at this stage. Uh, you guys, uh, you're almost ready to put a fork in it. You guys, the pitching for those teams are just horrible. And pitching is going to get you there. And it's going to get you through the playoffs. So I am I hate to say put a fork in San Francisco and Arizona this early 15 games in. But you guys are going to have to really turn it around. Um, Dodgers, 54 runs given up thus far. Uh, and Dodgers have, where are they ranked? Second ranked ERA. Padres, 12th ranked in Major League Baseball. And Colorado, again, 7th. Um, and all three teams are putting up big runs. Padres, Dodgers, and Rockies are big offensive teams. Um, and then the pitching's pretty decent. Padres, 75 runs given up, so they're kind of on the fence, but they're still a fantastic team. And this is going to be a very interesting division. You might get, you know, you're going to get three teams out of this division. You're going to get a division winner, and you're going to get uh, two wild cards probably the way they're playing. Thank you for watching Baseball News Club. Please subscribe. See you next time.